Howdy, Possum Patty here. It is June 28th and I am taking a walk along the Niantic River Estuary. Possum Patty on a field trip. Here I am down in Niantic. It is a pretty busy place. You can see the highway overhead. Well, you can hear the cars going by. And off in the distance is a drawbridge for the train tracks and it's just coming down right now. After a short walk on the boardwalk, we walked around to the other side where there's a little beach. What kind of rocks are these? Pickles. The first thing that I noticed when I got over to the beach side in Niantic were one or two of these slipper limpet shells. I guess you should say one or two million Atlantic slipper limpet shells. I picked up a few to bring them home to sketch and I looked up some information about them so I could write it on my page. Now the Latin name for this comes from the word slipper and their second Latin name or fornicata comes from fornix meaning arch. These are marine gastropods or sea snails. It's a mollusk. And sometimes they are called fornicating slipper snails because they form an arch because they tend to attach themselves to each other. If you turn the shell over, you can see this little septum or shell. And as I looked up more information on these slipper limpets, I became very fascinated with their life cycle because it does include a metamorphosis. Starting with the adult, the adult female will hold the fertilized eggs until they grow into a larvae. And then they're released into the water column, which is called the pelagic area. Now these little larvae don't look like the adults. They're little tiny swimmers. They have little body parts that help them swim about in the water column. But as they grow, they change. And this is the metamorphosis. They lose the little parts that help them swim and they grow the foot, which is common to the snails. And they also develop little shells. All the little juveniles are males and they'll attach at the top. Now the juveniles become attracted to the hormones that are released by the adults. The adults are benthic creatures. That means they usually attach themselves to something on the bottom of the seafloor. When you see this arch of all the different slipper shells attached, so there's always some males on the top and some females on the bottom. As the females get old and die off and the males grow, they will become females. Because of this idea that they're all males and then they turn into females as necessary when the larger females die off, they're called sequential hermaphrodites. I found this quite fascinating, this little life cycle of being swimmers, developing shells, getting attracted to the adults,
being a male and then changing into a female and then the cycle begins again. I found some of these arches on the beach. I didn't know they were alive, but the tide was going out, so they were exposed. And I went to pick one up and it moved slightly, so I put it back down. I didn't get a good picture of it. But when I pick up the little tiny shell, you, you, you can see one. And then at the end, of the video when I show the rock with the barnacles and things on it. There's a couple of these that have attached to each other. Something else that I found on the beach were these clamshells. I looked them up in my seashells of North America. And clams are bivalves. Bi means two. And valve refers to the shell. So it has two shells and a ligament that holds them together so they can open and close. Now, I tried to identify what kind of clam this was and I decided that it was the Atlantic Surf Clam by looking in this book. But then I went online and I found a brochure that somebody wrote to promote the little boardwalk in Niantic. And they did say that this was a surf clam. They say 70% of all clams that are harvested are these surf clams. Now I found this one over by the rocks, which means it was probably a gull had picked it up, flown it high and dropped it down on the rocks to crack it open so they can eat what's inside. People eat these, but they're kind of tough. So they're used either to make the chopped up clams that come in a can or to something to add to the clam chowder. And the third little shell on my page is also a kind of a little clam. I thought it was an arc clam, an Atlantic arc clam. But looking in that brochure, they call this a cockle or a heart clam. Now these can also be eaten. I guess they're more popular in Europe to be eaten. These are found in seas all around the world. I'm not sure that this is a cockle because this little brochure on the, on the Niantic Boardwalk, they also call the gulls a seagull. And to be picky, there's really no such thing as a seagull. They're just called gulls because not all gulls live at the sea. So anyone that refers to the gull as a seagull 
may not be trusted to correctly identify these little shells. Oh, that's just my feeling anyway. So this is my little trip down at the shore. I want to thank you for coming along. I'm going to do a few more pages of some other things that I found and saw while I was there. Thanks for coming along today. Bye-bye. <laughs>